the reality of, of strength training is you have to decide what's the what, what is the type of strength that that you want to actually develop when you're when you're talking about strength and when you're talking about intensity by the way it always has to be measured by time welcome to corporate warrior the podcast that brings you the best advice on how to improve your health optimize performance and maximize productivity with your host Lawrence Neal This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly, and I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done, and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity training trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and how you can get $1,000 off software licensing when you place an order, that's right guys, $1,000 off, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $1,000 off software licensing when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. podcast is brought to you by hituni.com. Hituni.com are a provider of amazing online courses for high intensity training qualifications. Hituni comes highly recommended by the best in the field, including Body by Science co-author Dr. Doug McGuff, Discover Strength CEO Luke Carlson, and trainer and founder of Bay.com, Drew Bay. It was founded by my friend, author, and longtime personal trainer, Simon Shawcross, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Simon has 15 years experience training clients and is supervisor of 15 thousand high intensity training workouts. Using knowledge from experts like Skylar Tanner, Dr. James Steele, Dr. Ellington Darden, Hit Uni is a gold mine for learning everything to do with high intensity training. The courses are delivered online through the website where you can learn via a variety of multimedia materials at your own pace. There's online support and a discussion forum where you can share ideas and ask for help. To learn more about high intensity training and improve my own results, I started their personal trainer course. The content is amazing, the courses are really easy to follow, and each section is organized into bite sized chunks that give you a real sense of achievement after you complete each one. I should also mention there is a DIY course. So, this is the course for you if you're not necessarily a personal trainer, but you want to learn more about high intensity training and how to implement it for maximum benefit in your own exercise regime. To get your exclusive Corporate Warrior 10% discount, discount on any course you purchase, simply head on over to hituni.com, that's H-I-T-U-N-I, U-N-I, dot com, and enter the coupon code CW10, that's CW and the number 10. So again, head on over to hituni.com, pick your course, and enter the coupon code CW10 for 10% discount. Thank you for your support. Hey guys, I'm Lawrence Neal and welcome to another episode of Corporate Warrior, the podcast that teaches you how to optimize your high intensity training protocol and your high intensity training business to help you achieve your health, fitness and business goals. My former guests include people like Rob Wolf, Mark Sisson, Tim Ryan, Brad Schoenfeld, Dr. Doug McGuff, Gary Torbs and many, many more. My next guest is Pete Sisko. Pete is a developer of the ultra brief, ultra intense method of muscle building called static contraction training. He has authored and co-authored six titles published by McGraw Hill on the subject of efficient strength training and is a successful online author and publisher of innovative fitness e-products. His training articles and methods have been featured in many mainstream publications, including Men's Journal, Golf, Men's Fitness, Flex, Muscle and Fitness, and others. 
His exclusive training method is extensively featured in Tony Robbins' Ultimate Edge product, and it is estimated that over 200,000 trainees have used his methods. His books have been translated into Japanese, Italian, Swedish, and Russian, and his e-products sell in over 100 countries worldwide. Pete has had a lot of success building an online business and has literally spent the last 15 years earning all of his income online and this has allowed him and his wife to travel the world at least for the last 10 years living in over 10 countries and pretty much doing whatever they want. So needless to say I found this very interesting um, as we discussed online business as well. So in this episode, we cover how Pete defines and measures intensity to manage his client's progress and maximize results, what training method he has found to be the most successful with his clients in building muscle fast, and before wrapping up, Pete talks about his online business lifestyle and how you can build your own online business leveraging your passion for high-intensity training and health and fitness in general, and much, much more. For all of the show notes and links for this episode and all episodes please go to corporatewarrior.org and don't forget to wait around at the end for your free gift and now I give you Pete Cisco. All right Pete well welcome to Corporate Warrior thank you for joining me on the show today. Thanks Lawrence it's good to be here. You are most welcome. So, as we yeah, as we alluded to before, we, I guess got uh, started recording officially. Um, wanted to kick off with some questions around exercise. Uh, one thing you, uh, which kind of piqued my interest and curiosity on your email, was you talked about how you measure intensity. Um, and I just wanted you to be able to kind of define like how you you know what is your definition of intensity? How do you define that? And then how do you use how do you measure it? And how do you use that information to improve your client results? Okay, thanks. Uh, you know, the, th- the thing about my perspective is I, unlike most people who are in the fitness game, uh, I, I sort of backed into it by, by accident. Um, uh, my friend, John Little, who's a, a longtime friend of mine, um, he and I started working out 30 years ago when we lived in the same city, Los Angeles, um, for the first time that the two of us had ever lived in in the same city. And uh, I really didn't know anything about strength training. He did. I didn't. And when we started training, uh, I was exposed to the concept of, you know, high intensity. It's all about high intensity and progressive overload. That's the key to stimulating new muscle growth. And as a complete outsider with a, a background in math and physics, the, the first thing I thought of is, look, this makes perfect sense. How do you measure the intensity? If I, how do I know my intensity is higher today than it was last week when I was doing the same exercise? And I was shocked to find out that actually nobody uses a measurement of intensity. And uh, so the... The measurement I used was was just, I mean, it's something anybody could have done since 1687 when Isaac Newton figured this stuff out. Uh, it's the amount of weight you lift per unit of time, the total amount of weight you lift per unit of time. So instead of thinking about how much can you bench press, well, you know, I, I can bench press uh, 225 pounds. A better measurement of that a better measurement of the intensity itself is to say, uh, well, you know, for example, if you say in, in, in one minute of lifting, I can do 12 reps and I can do 12 reps with 150 pounds. Well, that's a total of 1,800 pounds, 150 pounds, 12 times. That's 1,800 pounds per minute. So if you simply think of your intensity in those terms, uh, I can lift, I can bench press 1,800 pounds per minute. And then when you come back to the gym, you need to sort of pre-engineer your workout so you go over 1,800 pounds per minute. Um, That seemed very sensible to me. I'm shocked that nobody thought of it before. And... Uh, at least nobody really publicized it before. And since this came out in the 1990s and, you know, we tried to thump the tub a lot about uh, how smart, how smart it is. uh, 
it, it still doesn't really catch on. You know, you, you, you could go into a hundred gyms before you'd find one or two guys doing their workouts and measuring their intensity with a power factor. Awesome. That's really interesting. Um, so when you, when you're working with your clients, um, do you use this, do you use kind of the measuring of intensity to kind of gauge their progress and their performance from workout to workout? Like how does, how does this play into how you, I guess, optimize results? I don't even know if, if that business is still something you're very much focused on. Is that still a big focus of yours? You know, I, I said before we uh, did this interview that I'm not sure I've talked to anybody about this in close to 20 years um, because I, I really don't spend any time at all promoting uh, this particular business anymore. Mm. The, uh, my website has been in operation since 1996, and it's uh, precisiontraining.com. And we're... So to answer your question, I, I, I definitely have a service that I provide for uh, clients at that site. It's all done online, and we're basically always operating at capacity. So um, I'm, I'm not even mentioning it to, to get more people to rush over there and sign up because there's a, a good chance when you're hearing this, we can't take you anyway. But uh, it's measuring what people do on every exercise is exactly what we do. So, I, in fact, I I just, I don't understand how anybody can advocate high intensity training without having some kind of an objective measurement of what the intensity is so that you actually know it's high. You know, if, if you're gonna do biceps, uh, should you be doing concentration curls, standing cable curls? incline dumbbell curls, standing barbell curl, which one gives you the higher intensity? If you're really going to advocate for high intensity training and a guy wants to subject his biceps to the highest intensity of overload that he possibly can, which of those exercises is going to do it for him? So mm -hmm. over the years, we've taken measurements. We, we use people that are interested in this as sort of informal test subjects. These are not peer-reviewed university studies. These are just the informal studies that we've done at our own website over the years. And we quantify what what actually does deliver. If you take a dozen guys and they then they do these different exercises, which which ones are the ones where they lift the highest uh, intensity? You know, wh what's the one where a guy does 2,500 pounds per minute instead of 1,200 pounds per minute? So we've identified those, and though the best exercises are the ones that we put into our workouts. And then a person can do that workout, they can submit their data, they can say, here's how I did. And we have a way to quantify, as I already told you, it's the intensity that a person operated at on, on each individual exercise. But the other critical thing that gets completely overlooked in most cases is how long does it take that particular individual to recover from that, that combination of volume and intensity of exercise? Uh, and that's not the same number for everybody. You know, it's, it's not the same number for a 25-year-old who is in great shape as it is for a 55-year-old who's pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday doesn't work for 7 billion people. Uh, and as a matter of fact, when you start taking these measurements, you find out that any fixed duration uh, recovery doesn't work. Because as you get stronger, you start lifting a greater and greater tonnage. And you can't expect your body to recover from that tonnage at the same rate uh, on a straight line basis. It doesn't happen. So we measure these things, we quantify them, and then we're able to engineer a new workout for uh, uh, a client that has specific goals for each exercise, how much weight he should use, how many reps he sh or his goal number of reps in a fixed amount of time, a set amount of time, because it's all about work per unit of time. Uh, and we calculate the earliest day that 
that particular person could be expected to return to the gym and hit those goals based on how, you know, the actual real data of how he has recovered from that intensity and volume of exercise in his in his past workouts. How do you measure how well he's recovered from the previous exercises? Previous workouts. You know, it's an interesting measurement because it's uh, you're always it you're you're always working with estimates, it, and you you only f- find out sort of the parameters when you start seeing the failure. Uh, the failures pop up. So um, typically a guy has six exercises that he has to do. He's got these goals and uh, he's going along fine. You know, he's improving on four, five, six of those every time. And then he goes back to the gym and suddenly there's a lot of red cells in his, uh, um, in his spreadsheet, you know, where he's, he's gone backwards instead of forwards. And that's an indication, at least at that rate, you know, hey, you know what? This guy went back to the gym after eight days. Looks like it was a little too soon um, because he wasn't able to improve. He was literally weaker than the last time he was in the gym in an, in an empirical, you know, you know, true measurement way. You can say, look, this guy just wasn't as strong, as strong on this workout as he was on his workout eight days ago. So. Let's try, you know, let's do 10 or 11 days and see how he does. So mm. there, there's, there's always this, you know, you're always working with approximations. And there, there's just no way around that. Because oh. when, when you go into the gym today and you're going to do, say, you're going to do lat pull downs, there's a, there's a number that is the absolute highest possible intensity that you could squeeze out of your lat muscles today but we don't we don't know what that number is so you put a hundred pounds on the uh, of plates on the on the lap machine and in uh 30 seconds uh, maybe you can do uh 14 reps and then the clock runs out well you know could you have done 102 pounds and still got the 14 reps could you have done 107 and still got 14 um, if you picked up your cadence a little bit, could you have got 15 reps? Um, we, we, you never know how high up is. So that's, that's the reality of, of strength training with a focus on high intensity, where every time you want to go into the gym, you want to try and tap into your peak power in that particular muscle group. You, 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 you literally don't know that magic number of you know, today my lats were capable of 6,200 pounds per minute. That's, you know, 6,240 pounds per minute. That's what they were actually capable of. There's no way to know that number ahead of time. So, uh, you know, we push ourselves and we work with the approximations. But when you start keeping track of this in, in, a, in a, you know, let's call it a scientific way, when you start keeping track of this in a scientific way, it really opens up the door to very interesting observations about what each individual is capable of and whether they're even selecting the right weight, you know, because because if you go in and pick 200 pounds on the lap machine, you might only get six reps. And, you know, it turns out that's actually a way lower intensity than than what you're capable of and then if you pick too light a weight 80 pounds you bang away and the clock runs out because you're trying to do all this in say 30 seconds the clock runs out and you still got gas in the tank you could keep going so you didn't hit peak output and as i say when you when you keep track of these things um it really opens your eyes to what um, rational scientific training is because here's another thing that you rarely <laughs> hear from personal trainers, or at least they don't drive at home. No two workouts should ever be the same. They should never be the same because you're, you're always aiming at a moving target for, for a workout to be productive. You should go into the gym today and, and do your bench press because you're, you're, you're trying to increase the 
power and size of your chest muscles. So you do that exercise, and then you should go home and rest and eat well and do all of those things. And when you come back to the gym, if it was a productive workout, when you come back to the gym, you're supposed to be a stronger person. You're supposed to be capable. Your chest muscles are supposed to be capable of more than what you did last time. How much more? We don't know. And that's that's why, you know, you just try to keep nipping away, pushing that limit, pushing that limit and seeing how far you could go. But no two workouts should ever be the same. The exercises themselves uh, really can and should be the same so that you get apples to apples comparisons. But the weight you use and the number of reps that you do, there, there's no reason for those to be exactly the same twice in a row. So there's a feeling that um, it's not always smart to expect that you will improve every workout every workout and it may be and some some of my guests believe that it's better to have a more long-term view on your training performance as there's so many variables that affect recovery um you know out, other environmental factors um so is that do you agree with that or do you actually believe that you know no every single workout you should be better than the last that it should well, be that linear progression here- you know, here's the thing. You know, I'm always careful with the word should because I, I enjoy philosophy. And, uh, you know, it's up to people how they get their satisfaction. And uh, I don't even want to be judgmental about that. And I know that Mike Menser had a great line for this. He said, you know, because the people like being in the gym. They like going to the gym. They literally want to go every day. And what he said about that kind of frequent training is uh, they've taken a social need and elevated it to a training philosophy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's it, it, there are people who want to go to the gym uh, basically as frequently as possible because they love it. And I don't have a problem with that. I, I don't want to talk about, oh, you know, those guys are idiots and, uh, you know, use a bunch of pejoratives because I, I really honestly don't feel that way. They're, oh, yeah. they're entitled to do anything they, they want, you know, and, if, and if, if going to the gym twice a day, seven days a week is something that really makes you happy, I, I'm all for it. You should, you should do that. Yeah. So, but, sorry to interrupt but, you, Pete. Um, okay. But sorry, I mean in the context of um, – so sorry, I should have framed that question better. You know, okay. We're talking about people that want – all they care about is improving you know, th- their outcomes. So more, hypo- more muscular hypertrophy, better adaptation, that type of thing. They don't they get I, the social I, I got aspect. you. <laughs> I, I, okay. But the thing is wanting yeah. that doesn't mean that physiologically your body is going to respond that way. Mm-hmm. I, I, I struggle for a good analogy on this. But, uh, you know, I might like getting a haircut. But, I, you know, just because I visit the barber three days a week – doesn't mean my hair is ready to be cut again. It takes time for your hair to grow. It it takes time for your fingernails to grow and it takes time for muscle to grow. So so you know uh, you 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 talked about long-term training. The 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 question that I try and find is what what is the rate of increase in your intensity, your personal intensity of muscular output that is sustainable over months of training? You know, if if um, because that's really where the longevity of of productive training, and I have to use that word productive, the longevity of productive tr- training involves you know, finding the sustainability where, where, when can you go back to the gym fully recovered and stronger than when you left? Because that's, that's the time to do a productive workout and wanting it to be a shorter time, uh, is, is meaningless. You know, you, you, you need objective numbers, uh, that's really the key. You, you need objective numbers. And I just see a dearth of, of, you know, sort of objective measurement. It's, it, it, it boggles the mind, you know, you probably go to the occasional, uh, fitness expo where they show the new equipment, 
uh, for the year. You know, all the all the manufacturers come out with their new equipment. And if you go into the cardio side of, of one of these equipment ex, ex, uh, expositions, you find this great innovation. Uh, you know, you can ride a bicycle now and, and you're looking at a screen and it's connected to Google Earth and the the scenery that goes by is Colorado mountain road and you're biking along the road. And when you start to go up the mountain, uh, your bike gets more difficult, high tech stuff. Um, it's, it's brilliant stuff yeah. that, that they do particularly in cardio. You know, you see Apple watches that are measuring, uh, what runners are doing, what swimmers are doing in strength training. There's just a total lack of, of innovation. If it, do, I mean, do you see anything? Think about this next time you walk into the gym. Do you th- see anything in a modern strength training gym that could not have been manufactured 200 years ago? You think of your lat pull-down machine, um, you know, a, a universal bench press machine or, you know, hammer strength uh, deadlift. And if you think of the steam engines and horse carriages that were coming out of Pennsylvania and Birmingham in 1817, is there is there a single item used today in strength training I that's, would say, I'd that's say beyond that, was, that old technology? Are you not familiar with ARX? Those, those are the guys who are starting to uh, take the kind of measurements I'm talking about, right? Yeah, and they... they uh... You know, they're using software that's then connected to servers in the cloud that can analyze data like total work and force output and various other metrics. It's true. That, that's a start. But, but you know, that, many, that equipment, yeah. there, there's, you know, there's not much market demand for it. You don't see it much. Um, it, and uh, why not? It's, be, it's because people don't talk about what I talk about. They don't talk about measurement. They, they talk about vague things and, you know, there's a supplement industry that's, you know, shoveling supplements to people when they fail and they have a, in my estimation, they have a vested interest in people's failure because it, it uh, encourages them to consume more nutritional supplements thinking that that might be the answer. But Honestly, you know, Arthur Jones, 47 years ago, Arthur, Arthur Jones innovated a cam, right? The cam-shaped pulley and the Nautilus equipment. In, in the 1890s, somebody came up with interchangeable plates. If you ever see the really old uh, uh, drawings of the strongman, you know, they use those barbells that were just <laughs> a fixed, a fixed uh, barbell thing. Somebody innovated selective plates that could go on a barbell. That, that was clever. Arthur Jones innovated a, a cam, uh, and people don't even agree on whether or not that's beneficial. Um, he was a he was a great he was a great businessman, though Arthur Jones. He's you know ten times the businessman I'll ever be. He he brought in as as I'm sure your you and your listeners know, but he you know he brought in guys like Casey Viator and Eddie Robinson and Mike Menser to help promote his equipment and and had massive success. But when you think of the age of Silicon Valley and and the technology that we have now and the personal metrics, the explosion of personal metrics, you know, where where is it in strength training? There's it's it's still guys going, well, you know, I bench about two twenty five. Well, you know, why don't they say what does that mean? <laughs> why don't they say fourteen thousand pounds per minute? Um yeah, it's you know, these things don't get measured. We did, you know, and I said we did these informal studies, but for example, you know, what what delivers uh, a higher intensity? One set to failure, two sets to failure, three sets, or strip sets where you start heavy and keep going down lighter and lighter to failure, pyramid sets where you keep adding more weight un- until you're at failure. Uh, time sets where you you pick 30, 60, 90 seconds, or how about sets where you do a fixed number? You do 25 reps uh, every time, and you or 50, or you know, just a fi- it's always a fixed number of sets that doesn't change, and then you try and add more more uh, more weight. We we actually took the time to measure that, 
And, you know, it was, it was came to a pretty obvious conclusion about which of those actually works best for people. You know, why, why does it take a jerk? What was that guy? conclusion? What the, uh, but let me, let me just say, why Sorry. does it take a jerk water guy like me doing, you know, these informal studies with uh, people at my website to, to even check something like that? You know, why isn't that coming out of Ball State University? Why isn't that coming out of McMaster in, in Canada? Those guys do, you know, gold standard strength training studies, and it always seems to be in service to some gimmick or nutritional supplement that is probably, you know, financing the, uh, the, uh, the, the research. The answer is time sets. Um, when, uh, and the other thing is we, we did another study. So we knew that we knew, Hey, you know what? Time sets was the best. Then we did another one and we said, well, how about if you tested this? What if there's guys doing 30 second time sets, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes. Okay. Uh, in their strongest range of motion. What if there's, uh, time sets in a full range of motion? What if there's what if it's static contraction? What what if a what if you do a five second hold, just one in the strongest range? What if you do three of those? What if you do a five second static contraction, but you do it three times? Who is going to gain the most muscle? Um, who's going to have the greatest improvement in strength? So, you know, we we did all that and we work and we worked that out, but uh, and and you come to a conclusion. That is actually kind of worth something, you know. It's like, wow! Out of all those groups, there was one group that really stood out from from the others. So, how about trying to train that way for a while? And if you start taking empirical measurements uh, instead of this nonsense about going by feel and let your body tell you, and you know, just this gym lore and and the macho nonsense, you know, like some guy's got a hypothesis of what what works and you go, yeah, a guy's got a 12 inch arm. You know, you're going to listen to a guy with a 12 inch arm, <laughs> uh, you know, just just that that macho, low level nonsense thinking. I'm in complete agreement. Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of my a lot of my listeners would completely agree with you on a lot of this. Um, I am sorry to sorry to butt in. I am just really curious though as to what you you know based on all of your experience based on the books you've written uh, programs you've created you know what protocols and maybe it's not a one size fits all and we can address that but what protocols you found to be most effective for most people whether that be static contraction or something else um, right. before we move on to obviously talking about more business related stuff right okay thanks um that's a good question i get i get uh variations of that question uh, quite a lot and, I'll, sure and I, I'll, I yeah I'll, I'll answer it but uh i just want to divert for one second because you sure. touched on something about the one size fits all you know the the other reality is in strength training is there are two kinds of strength that uh humans have and if you the example I like to use, if you look in the Guinness Book of World Records for who has the bench press record, you'll you'll find, and I, I haven't looked in a long time. When I, Last time I looked, it was 805 or 810 pounds or something was, was the world record for bench press, which is done the way we're all familiar with. One, one rep, full range, bar touches your chest. You got to lock it out. Honest, you know, an honest full range bench press. And there's a guy who has a record for that that's 800 and something pounds last time I looked. But there's another guy who has a record for the bench press. And uh, I think it's a British guy who uh, set the record for the total weight he lifted in 24 hours. And it's millions of pounds that the guy lifted in 24 hours. Well, he has a Guinness Book of World Record for that, and it's a different kind of strength. I, you know that that guy can't beat the 800-pound record, but you also know the 800, the guy with the 800-pound record, he can't beat the 24-hour record. And that speaks to the variation that that just exists in humans. There, there are guys who can run 100 meters excuse me, faster than anyone else in the world. 100 meters, no one in the world is faster. But that guy is useless on, on the 26-mile marathon. 
and vice versa. You know, there's a, there's a champion in, in both of those. So the reality of, of strength training is you have to decide what's the, what, what is the type of strength um, that, that you want to uh, actually develop. And when you're, when you're talking about strength and when you're talking about intensity, by the way, it always, and I underline that word always, has to be measured by time. That's how we measure intensity in this universe. You know, the the speed that a car goes is the distance it travels over a certain amount of time. That's just the way things work. So when somebody wants to get stronger, one of the things that they have to take into consideration is over what period of time do you, do you want to get, you know, stronger over, you know, that explosive 10 second strength or do you want to get stronger over a minute or two minutes or 30 minutes? Because if you actually know what you want, you can deliberately engineer a workout to address that. And then you take measurements for that particular kind of strength and and then you make sure things are progressive from there. So that that's my and I, I coined a term for that alpha strength and beta strength. Again, nobody seems to make this distinction, uh, but there are two kinds of strength. And I, I just arbitrarily came up with the terms alpha strength and beta strength to measure those two uh, forms of human power output. And when people do a workout, uh, do one of my workouts. That's one of the things that that they get in the sort of report of how they did. They they get a measurement of their alpha strength and a, a measurement of their beta strength. Um, and I, I don't want to digress further, but there's an interesting thing about uh, human strength. There's there's a curve. These things are not linear. There's two things that are on a curve. Uh, recovery is on a curve. And if we have time, you can ask me about that. And and intensity is on a curve, too. Uh, but to uh, directly answer the question, what we discovered most recently, and again, we're, we're always working with approximations and, and trying to get closer to the, the giant truths of the universe. But the best workout we have found so far that I call a power factor uh, mass gain workout is a... Work out of six really heavy compound exercises, common exercises like, you know, deadlifts and, and shrugs and leg presses, all, all ones you've heard of, uh, that are done for a 30-second timed set. And psych, I think I think the the magic, and I, I I hesitate to use that word magic, but I I think the the magic of the 30 second time set is it's psychological when the clock is running down and you see you've only got oh you've only got 12 seconds left how many more reps can i get in oh i've only got 6 seconds rep 6 seconds left can i get two reps i think i think in that time set uh psychologically people push themselves uh harder because the the clock is running down um i i think that's part of the reason that um it's so effective um so that's what we have people doing. When someone comes to me and says, "Look, I just want to get as strong as I can, uh, and I want I want to gain the most muscle mass I can in the shortest period of time," um, so far there's there's no better answer that I that I have than do this mass gain workout and send you know. Put, you, know, you enter your data at the website, and then and then we can analyze it and say, okay, great. Here's how you did. Here's a graph of of how you did, and here, based on your rate of progress, your personal rate of progress, because that varies with people, and your personal rate of recovery, here's your new goals, and it's a different workout than you did last time. Uh, and here is the first day we think you could go back to the gym and hit those goals. So that's what we do. Very, very interesting. And I, I wanted to go on to business, but I have to ask more questions about that quickly. Um, okay. what, um, so, so when you say 30 second time set, so one might actually not reach failure in those exercises. Am I correct in saying? Yeah, see that exactly. That's another thing that happens because you pick a weight that's too heavy. So, you, you know, you get to 20 seconds and it's like, oh man, I got to put it down. 
but you do put it down, but maybe you only put it down for four, five, seven seconds, you know, and with the clock still running, you pick it up again and bang out a few more reps. Right. Okay. But you're, but it's a single set, right? Not a, it's, it's all over in 30 seconds. Right. Okay. And, and you know, what ends up happening is at the end of this workout is we end up telling a guy, look, you lifted, uh, in, you know, in your whole workout, you lifted uh, 28.8 tons, uh, you know, 28 metric tons. And just for fun, we put on on the, on the report that that's the equivalent of 18.5 midsize cars. <laughs> that's some motivation. <laughs> it is. It is because, you know, you realize what you're capable of, you know, and then you feel like an idiot for all those years. You, you stood at the dumbbell rack, you know, with doing shrugs with dumbbells. You know, it's like that stuff. That's that that intensity is so far below what you're capable of. It's just a joke. Mm. And when you start realizing, I mean, women realize that they're lifting 15 cars in one workout. And, you know, I tell them, next time you're in a, a small parking lot, you know, count out 15 cars. And and remember that you lifted those in in a 20-minute workout. And, in fact, you did six exercises that were 30 seconds each. So that's really only three minutes of effort. And in three minutes of effort, a, a woman's lifting 15 automobiles. So... This is what people are really capable of. This is what high intensity training really is. I mean, if you really start <laughs> to squeeze the highest intensity out of the major muscle groups in your body, you will be lifting many, many tons per workout, even per minute. And you found, see, so as you said, you found this is the, the protocol that's had the most success for your clients. Um, so so they okay so they're doing they're doing time sets and you said that the the the, the frequent the frequency can vary but sometimes it could be more than a week 10 days something like well, that. well it, it, it always varies and and uh i mean so far and i i don't like using absolute statements when there are seven billion people on earth and you know i didn't test them all but uh I've I've never found a person yet who could who could do like workouts like say three or four days apart ten times in a row and and make progress. So far, I haven't found I, I haven't found that guy. Um, because what happens is you start noticing, hey, you know what? I didn't do as well this week as I as I did last, or you know, I didn't do as well on Thursday as I did on Monday. Um, so you have to uh, change the training frequency. I mean, that's the thing that has to give. Mm -hmm. If if you're gonna, if you're really gonna go in and lift, you know, 25 cars on Wednesday, you know, can you lift 27 on Friday? Probably not. So that Monday, Wednesday, Friday stuff, that 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 gets shown up for for the BS that it is pretty quickly when you start taking objective measurements. Cool. Um, uh, sorry, yeah. go on. Um, and uh, again, you know, what I said about this workout is this, this is for the guy who this, you know, we were trying to find like, how, how can you gain the most mass as quickly as possible? If a guy came to me and said, you know, I, I do, uh, 10 mile, uh, canoe races or, or I do, um, uh, I'm a marathon runner and I, I need, I need to develop more strength for my running. I, I wouldn't put them on this, you know, because this is, this is, you know, that's this is a workout that is for that uh, explosive power that gives you maximum muscle mass. You know, the, you know, a marathoner is not at all interested in maximum muscle mass. They're 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 trying to get the dials in a completely different place, which is basically, you know, uh, higher sustained power without adding a bunch of weight to my body. So you know, you would d deliberately engineer a different workout for them. Oh, understood. Yeah, and I thank you for explaining that. It's really interesting. So, okay. So one of the other things I wanted to cover. I know we haven't got a great amount of time, um, but I want to just, I guess, cover it as well as we can. So you've you've created this awesome lifestyle, um, running several online businesses, traveling the world uh, for the last fifteen years ish. 
um, earning income online. And you did a wonderful podcast on, I think it was a Liberty Under Attack is the name of the podcast. Um, yeah, which, I did one, yeah. which I will point people to for more context on this because um, we've only got really 15 minutes to cover it. Um, so if people want more context, go there and I'll, I will link to that podcast in the show notes as well. Um, but let's let's talk about that for a second. So um, I'm really interested in this because you know I, I effectively run an online business myself. My blog and my podcast is a internet business that can be, I suppose, ran from anywhere. Um, and I think a lot of the people listening, you know, they're they're high intensity training enthusiasts. And I know several people who are listeners to the podcast that are interested in building some kind of business in this because they're passionate about it. And right. I, I see so much opportunity within high intensity training as like an umbrella. So for instance, I see opportunity for someone to create a blog about just high intensity training body weight exercises. Um, you know what I mean? There's so many niches within that uh, feel that some that people can create businesses within so i'm just very curious what what do you think about what you know what, if people in that from that kind of uh, perspective ask you know i want to create a business like how do you what's your thoughts on that and what, what kind of opportunities are available to people yeah thanks um i you know the short answer is i think it's a brilliant idea and there's massive opportunity and i'll, I'll tell you how i know um i started out in a very traditional way, and this is back in the this is the mid '90s, uh, where uh, we came up with this idea of power factor training and and created a book. And uh, back then, it, the, our very first one was self published, and um, you know it cost like it was about ten thousand dollars, I think. And this is in about ninety, gosh, what was it, ninety four, ninety five, something like that, uh, to get the books printed you know, at a commercial uh, printer and, you know, we got a pickup truck and, you know, you had to, you had to order a lot, you know, there's like minimum quantities. <laughs> we got a, we, we rented a pickup truck and, and brought them back to our place and stacked them up in the garage and, you know, did mail order ads to sell them. And we went from that to uh, New York, uh, publishing uh mcgraw hill and you get a contract and they give you a bit of money nothing great mm. like ten fifteen thousand dollars back then is what you'd get up front and then you have to earn out a royalty with that and a royalty you know on those books is like 75 cents you know that's what an author gets when somebody buys a book in a bookstore but what happened was and the abbreviated version is uh i came to realize that you could you could do all of this online. And I, I had an ebook um, back in 2001, which is, you know, practically the stone age in, in technology terms, 2001. Back then you had to, you, you had to explain what an ebook was to people. Uh, and they, and they were these big cumbersome program file type things. And I still had friends back then that I had to tell them what the internet was. Um, <laughs> but, what I what came to happen over the years is I de I really refined that business and I, I um, created a membership site and I was able to sell equipment for for a while we had a static contraction machine we were selling and it uh, became you know just fantastically lucrative I um, I made a lot of money I mean it's in the millions of dollars that that I made in, through online business and. Even at that, I was it was it, I, it was slow to dawn on me that this is actually por this is what I now call portable income. This this is the ability I I could live anywhere and do it. It's all online. What, uh, at the time I was living in the United States, um, I had a green card. I'm I'm not an American, but I, I at that time I had a green card, and. Um, but I realized, you know what? I could I could do this from anywhere, and um, so we, my wife and I, again to abbreviate things, my wife and I sold off everything: our house, cars, all. You know, we had that, you know, just high consumption lifestyle with a whole bunch of cars and big house and property, and you know, we we have a big family anyway, and just it, it. We sold off all of that, and this was before the crash. This is before two thousand and eight. And um, that was the most liberating thing. Just I, I couldn't believe that. Just uh, 
just to sell that stuff off and and not have any of that responsibility anymore. Mm-hmm. And then because our kids all were old enough to, to be on their own at that point, although in the early stages we, we traveled a lot with, you know, all or some of the kids. But um, what my wife and I did for 10 years after after we sold everything was we have one suitcase each. Um, and you know, it can't, that's the airline rule. It can't weigh more than 20 kilos. And we, we have traveled all over the world and we've lived in, in Thailand and Mexico and, and Belize and Spain and mainland China. And I'm talking to you today from Ireland. Um, just down the road. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's just down the road from you. So, uh, it's, it's, I, I've actually become an evangelist for it. I, I think that it is, it is. The, the the most practical pathway to personal freedom that um, that certainly that you can find today and it's I mean it never existed before um, so I I for the last um, few years because we, we kept getting asked you know how do you do it how do you live all over the world when you know did you win the lottery and so, you know, we realize there's a, there's a real interest in people knowing, you know, how, how do you actually do this? Because I have run an online business essentially since, since 1996 is when I put my first website up. And I monetized that website even in 96. Um, it made a pittance back then. How did you make but, How did you take transactions? You, you know, I didn't. In in 1996, what I did was I put up this web, this website that uh, mentioned what our books were at Barnes and Noble and 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 Borders and the places you could buy them. And then I also had a link to this brand new website called Amazon.com. <laughs> and even then, Amazon had a uh, affiliate program. So I, you know, okay, I went through the, jumped through the hoops and I hooked that up and I just completely forgot about it. And then a long time later, like a year, year and a half, it was a long time, uh, a paper check arrived in my mailbox for 300 bucks. Yeah. And, and I just couldn't believe that that stupid website thing that I created, uh, generated, 300 bucks, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. And that's when I started thinking, well, you know, what, what else can you do with this? When, what? And I got serious about it back then. Anyway, today, uh, my wife and I operate a, a website called safely leave the rat race dot me. Great domain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Safely leave the rat race. And the idea of the safely thing is that you start an online business on the side, you know, while you're still doing whatever you do now and you, you build up the income from it. And when it has a you know, predictable, reliable monthly income, you can step away from your nine to five job uh, you know, basically with the absolute minimum of risk because you're already, you're already making money with an online business. And to uh, directly answer what you were talking about with personal trainers, it's a great fit for personal trainers. And, and I'm, I'm the guy to tell you that because I've had a website all this time. I, as you know, we've been talking about the, the precision training website, yeah. which has since it's made me money every day for over 15 years it still does um but the safely leave the rat race dot me site is about how to build your own online business and we we actually help people with that because i i just have you know we have so much experience in it and we have experience in all of it you know the lifestyle the you know, just, you know how just every aspect of it, but I, I really, I really have turned into an evangelist for it uh, because I, I just think it is such a brilliant path to personal freedom. You know, there's a, there's a lot. Most of us have things that we would really like to do in life, and if if we're honest about it, the thing that limits us is, you know, we have we got to have a job. We we have to have money coming in. So. You know, it would be nice to run off and do this or that, or it would be nice to spend my time doing something in in many cases that doesn't even make any money. You know, I just I just do it because I enjoy it. You know, um, rescuing golden retriever dogs. You know, it would be just great if I could spend my life doing that, and people can't because you, you really can't make money at that. But you can make money online 
doing something that you're really interested in. And that income is completely portable. And personal trainers are absolutely qualified to deliver value to people. They, you know, I would say do it the way I do. I mean, it doesn't, obviously it doesn't have to be power factor workouts and static contraction, all the exact things. But the way you make money is you deliver something of value to somebody and a personal trainer can deliver various things. If they can, there's, you know, meal plans and there's specialized workouts. Um, like you said, you know, the guy who says, yeah, you know what, though, I just want to do body weight exercises. Well, a personal trainer could design something for you and present it in a way where somebody says, you know, I, I, I like to tell people if you can get to the point where you're explaining what you're going to do for somebody and, and you can get them to the point of saying, shut up and take my money. <laughs> um, that's that's when you know you're 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 going to have a successful online business and personal trainers can deliver all kinds of value. Um, so it's, it's a natural, it's a natural. And you know what the beautiful thing about it is, is it opens up the market massively. And there's so many niches out there. Like I said, the guy who only cares about body weight exercises or the, 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 the guy who is, uh, you know, all about golfing and he doesn't want, he doesn't, he's not interested in all this bodybuilding stuff and macho. He wants to be a better golfer. He wants to hit the ball farther. He wants to have stamina for 36 holes. That guy, what's the, you know, what's the workout for him? You can find that guy. This is the beauty of, of the online world. You can find the exact niche of people that you need and you can put your message in front of them. That's that's unprecedented before. You know, when we started out, it and this is even back in the 90s before supplement ads drove up the price of everything, but you know, ads in in Flex magazine were were four thousand dollars to to run an ad. It was it was eight, nine, ten thousand to be in muscle and fitness magazine. And that's way back then. I, I, I don't have a clue what it would be now. Um, but that's how you had to find people who were interested in what you're selling. Now you can find them in many cases, you can find them for nothing on, on social media. And even when you pay on social media, it's not that much money. So it, it's, it's absolutely a good fit for, for personal trainers. They can find a niche and, uh, what I started to say was the the niche is basically worldwide in in many cases. So so the the personal trainer who is stuck in Bradford, England, or you know Flint, Michigan, and the local economy is just not that good, and he's really struggling trying to find clients who can even afford to pay him. Uh, that guy's got a problem. Because he's reliant on the on the, his own local economy, but when you move online, you don't have that restriction, and you can tar- target the exact people you need uh, in a in a in a massive area. You know, there's two billion people online, and they they uh, they tend to be affluent. You know, they they all either have a computer or a smartphone. Um, so anyway. That's maybe that's a longer answer than you were bargaining for. Now I'm loving it. <laughs> I mean, I, I completely agree. I think there's a massive amount of opportunity, and uh, yeah, I think I think I, I wish I had come across uh, your course many years ago um, because you know you you uh, you describe actually I think in the the video the intro video about you know there's so many money making courses out there so you've got to be careful about what you choose and generally speaking anything that's um, get rich quick or shiny object is one to steer clear of in my experience oh absolutely absolutely there's just just there's tons of crap out there you know and you know I've I've been kind of ripping up the uh, strength training industry like you know uh, nobody measures what are they thinking? You know, I've been kind of beaten up on them a little bit, but you know, I it, it's funny because I, I sort of you know I, I, it was a turnoff for me, you know. But look, what I what do I find myself in now? Make money online. That's I mean, and essentially that's the market I'm in now, which is which is worse. I mean, the the sleaze in the in the make money online market is is just incredible. So um, yeah, it's I, I suppose if you look around you find that anywhere but um you know there there are 
fundamental principles in 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 building a business. And I, I, I like to tell people that, you know, you want to build your online business using the same principles that, that work. 200 years ago and you know they've worked for centuries yeah. you, you you deliver something of real value to people that they're happy to pay for and they're glad they did and and if you if you take that approach you'll be fine well said and uh i know that you're really busy pete but we've got to do a part two because i'm fascinated more about this um so already so, you haven't you haven't you haven't got your market feedback yet you know you don't know whether or not it, it, listeners are, are uh are, are gonna love this or whether they're gonna say uh, where'd you drag that guy up <laughs> no it doesn't matter i think i do it for my purely for my own satisfaction but you know, <laughs> i'm sure people will really enjoy this um but sadly we do have to wrap up um right. so just for just lastly uh, where can the listeners find out what you're up to now um you know what websites would you like to send them to and what are you focused on um well you know i i i think that if uh, they're interested in the strength training stuff that's all at precision training and uh, precision and it's really the only place it is and then um if they are interested in starting an online business then uh it, it would be safely leave the rat race dot me um that's th- those are the good places to start and there's ways to contact me uh, on those sites anyway so if somebody needed to know something more specific i could always help them Uh, and i really do for those listening i really do encourage you to check out if you're interested in starting a business um and you know it doesn't have to be obviously in high intensity training it can be in anything um, do check out that url and i'll obviously link to that in the show notes um because i think it would really help you get started um and to find as i said to find the resources links show notes, everything that uh, pete and i mentioned on this episode and all episodes please go to corporatewarrior.org and until next time guys thank you very much for listening I hope you enjoyed that. Before you head off, head on over to corpwarrior.com to get your free ebook with six interview transcripts with some of my top guests, including Dr. Doug McGuff, Drew Bay, and Bill Day Simone, on how to optimize muscle gain, fat loss, and overall health in an efficient, effective, and sustainable way. These transcripts are not verbatim, deliberately. Instead, they've been transcribed in an easy read format to make it more enjoyable and easier for you to quickly pick out what you need and start getting results. To get your ebook, head on over to corp warrior.com that's c-o-r-p warrior.com and enter your email address then check your email for an email from me with a confirmation link once you click the link you'll be instantly redirected to a pdf version of the transcripts this episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly, and I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done, and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, it's intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity training trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and how you can get $1,000 off software licensing when you place an order, that's right guys, $1,000 off, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $1,000 off software licensing when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. 
This podcast is brought to you by HitUni.com. HitUni.com are a provider of amazing online courses for high-intensity training qualifications. HitUni comes highly recommended by the best in the field, including Body by Science co-author Dr. Doug McGuff, Discover Strength CEO Luke Carlson, and trainer and founder of Bay.com, Drew Bay. It was founded by my friend, author, and longtime personal trainer, Simon Shawcross, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Simon has 15 years' experience training clients and has supervised over 15,000 high-intensity training workouts. Using knowledge from experts like Skylar Tanner, Dr. James Steele, Dr. Ellington Darden, Hit Uni is a goldmine for learning everything to do with high-intensity training. The courses are delivered online through the website, where you can learn via a variety of multimedia materials at your own pace. There's online support and a discussion forum where you can share ideas and ask for help. To learn more about high intensity training and improve my own results, I started their personal trainer course. The content is amazing, the courses are really easy to follow, and each section is organized into bite sized chunks that give you a real sense of achievement after you complete each one. I should also mention there is a DIY course, so this is the course for you if you're not necessarily a personal trainer but you want to learn more about high intensity training and how to implement it for maximum benefit in your own exercise regime. To get your exclusive Corporate Warrior 10% discount, discount on any course you purchase, simply head on over to hituni.com, that's H-I-T-U-N-I U-N-I, dot com, and enter the coupon code CW10, that's CW in the number 10. So again, head on over to hituni.com, pick your course, and enter the coupon code CW10 for 10% discount. Thank you for your support.